everyone, welcome back to my show. Super excited to have you all here with me today. We are doing a marmalade and we're doing an orange marmalade. I've never made a marmalade in my life before and much less a blood orange marmalade. I don't particularly like blood oranges uh, myself, but this, just looking from the photos, this looks like an amazing marmalade. So I thought out of all the things that I've seen in this book, uh, food in jars. This looked like the most amazing marmalade. So I'm gonna give this a try Really simple marmalade. It's just three pounds of blood oranges Blood oranges are usually in season between January and March or April uh, So if you're watching this between May and uh, December you might not be able to find blood oranges if you can find them they're probably imported uh, the the thing with marmalades in general is you want to use a very high quality fruit. So the higher quality, the better. So try to go for organic. Uh, you want to wash these in warm, soapy water to get all the pesticides off of them. Even if they're organic, you don't know where they've been, who's touched them, any of that stuff. So just make sure, give them a good rinse, clean them up nicely, let them dry. And the first step here with these oranges is going to be peeling them so we're going to use a peeler uh, to get the skin off and i'll show you how how i'll do that and then we're going to go ahead and uh, chop those up into nice little pieces we're going to cook those and then we're going to cook the flesh of the oranges as well and that's basically it we're going to combine this with sugar so it's three ingredients it's oranges it's sugar and it's pectin now pectin is optional because oranges themselves have a lot of pectin in them, in the seeds and in the skin here. So as you've probably seen through my other videos, if you watched any of them, I try not to use too much pectin because A, it's another ingredient and B, I do like my jams and jellies and whatever uh, a little bit runny. Uh, but I don't expect that to be the case uh, with this one because even in the recipe, book this is an optional step so the pectin is very much um, not necessary for this recipe which is perfect because I don't want to deal with pectin right now uh, so that's it we're gonna get started and um, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and uh, let's get going so after you washed your fruit and dried it you can go ahead and peel it so we're gonna use a serrated peeler to peel the zest off the oranges so I'm gonna go lengthwise here and then what we're gonna do is chop it up. All right, so when it's all said and done, this is what they got. They got a pile of blood orange uh, peels. So what you wanna do at this step is chop these up. Now you can do it a few ways. You can just randomly cut it like this or you can go lengthwise all right so that was an insane amount of chopping here but it's done thank god now what we're gonna do with all of this is we're gonna get it into boiling water for 30 minutes so i have uh two quarts of boiling water over on the, on my left now with our water at full boil we're gonna get our orange peel in let that come to a boil and then we're gonna take the heat down to a simmer and they're gonna simmer this for about 25 30 minutes until each one of these is tender now in the meantime let's take care of the rest of the oranges all right so the next step here is what we want to do is supreme our oranges or supreme i don't feels like a french word so i feel like it should be supreme our oranges but I don't know, so I, I think it's supreme or supreme, I, it depends on where you're from, I guess. So what you wanna do is, you wanna cut off both ends here. I'll show you how to do that. So what, what we're trying to achieve is this, and what you wanna do is take the knife to both ends. So cut down one, cut the other. I just realized that this is an orange and not a blood orange. I think it must have gotten mixed in so ignore this one here but that is what we're looking for so now that I see the red inside I'm like oh yeah it should be red shouldn't it cut off the rind here and this rind is that's the bitter part right so we don't want that we want the, the bright blood here so you want to go around and you want to get as close as you can but 
without taking off any of the flesh inside, any of the fruit. And we're gonna discard all of this, right? So we're gonna take these and this goes into a discard pile. We're not gonna use it to cook. Now what you wanna do also is go between these veins that we have here. So you're gonna go for each between each one and cut down gently and get the fruit out, right? So just like that. It does help to have a very sharp knife for this. Well, it helps to have a sharp knife for everything. I would really recommend having sharp knives. You're much more likely to get, cut yourself if you don't have a sharp knife. I say that as I'm doing this on camera, so if I get cut with my sharp knife, that kind of defeats my whole argument. You might want to do this over a bowl, just to capture these juices, so when you're cutting it down, when you're supreming it, or supreming it, you want to do that just over a bowl so you catch all those nice juices. So when it's all said and done, you're gonna end up with something like this and all the pieces in here. So what you want to do is take this in your fist, squeeze it out and get all that juice out. And make sure you don't squirt it on your white shirt that you are wearing. <laughs> don't wear a white shirt when you're working with this. All right, that's it. So we don't want this, it's gonna be a lot of bitterness. Uh, so we're gonna discard that as well. Here we have our oranges, and what we're gonna do now is put that aside. We're gonna get a bowl with a strainer. We're gonna take the orange rinds that have been cooking, and we're gonna strain that really quick. And you do wanna preserve that liquid. Put this aside. Now in this pot, we're gonna combine the orange rinds themselves. We're gonna toss in the oranges. And we're gonna add six cups of that cooking liquid. Okay, turns out that's literally all the <laughs> cooking liquid, so I could have just added the oranges right in there. And now we're gonna bring this back up to rapid boil. Now we also wanna add our sugar, which I forgot, and, and we need about six cups of sugar. So I'm gonna transfer this into a larger pot. All right, so we do need a much larger pot here. I've transferred this in here and adding in all our sugar. And we're gonna bring it this to rapid boil. Stir to combine. Now what we want to do is get this up to a boil and we're going to cook it vigorously for about 30 to 40 minutes until it reaches a temperature of 220 degrees Fahrenheit or 105 degrees Celsius. Now I had this cooking for about an hour now so the recipe calls for half an hour but it was definitely not done in half an hour. You can see it's thickening up nicely. The fruit is disintegrating. I'm gonna check the temperature on this really quick. So it needs to be 220 degrees. And we're almost there. And it needs to hold 220 for one minute straight. I'll check it in another minute. And um, this is indicating that it's almost done. There's another test actually for checking if it's done. So I'll, I'll walk you through that right now. Now the second method of testing this out is gonna be to take one of these plates, put it in a freezer for 15 minutes, take it out and put a little bit of your uh, marmalade onto the platter, just like this. And now we're gonna throw it back into the refrigerator for three minutes. And once it's out, we're gonna test to make sure it's done. So after letting it sit in the freezer, there's going to be a film that's gonna form on the top of the surface here. So when you touch it, you'll see that film form. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick it up and I'm not even sure if I have the right film, but essentially what you're testing for is the doneness. So when you're moving your finger around, you can see if this is the right thickness and the consistency that you want in your marmalade. For me, this is perfect, so I'm gonna let it go as it is. My temperature gauge is showing at uh, 225 degrees Fahrenheit. I would say we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and can this at this point. Got our little jar here. Put it down, ladle in, make sure to stir in your uh, marmalade so that it's evenly distributed and ladle it in. It's gonna be two quarter cup scoops, so half a cup per jar here. 
This looks amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, this looks good. So what you want to do is put a little lid on that. All right. And I got a full set of instructions on how to can in another video. So please check that out when you're done here if you haven't seen that yet. I'm skipping over some steps. Here you just want to um, screw it on lightly, not tight at all. And we're going to put that aside and we're going to can the rest of them. All right, so finally we are done. We have 56 ounces of orange marmalade here. I'm super excited about this. I've never made marmalade before. It smells delicious. It looks amazing. It looks beautiful, actually. It's got none of that bitter taste from what I could gather from like a little bit of the samples that I've had. I've been letting it cool off before I dig into it. So I wanted to do it here on camera. But before I do, if you've gotten this far into the video, you are probably enjoying it. You're getting some value out of it. So please hit that like button. Give me a subscribe if you feel like subscribing to my channel. And if you want to keep track of what I'm doing, I'm going to be posting one video every week uh, on canning specifically, how to can different foods. Uh, check out my channel. You'll see a bunch of videos depending on when you're looking at this, at which point in time. Uh, so let me dig into this really quickly and let's give it a try. So I have a, another special like over the top filled jam just for myself because last time I made cantaloupe and I literally ate three of these <laughs> in three days. Okay, so that's how bad it was. Um, that is my sweet tooth. So this looks amazing. Come on. All right, <laughs> it is really, really, really good. I am a convert into marmalade, for sure. I don't, yeah, I've never had anything like this before. I've, I've had marmalade before and I didn't like it. And, oh my God. Of course it was store-bought. This is so good. I need, I need to look at that book now and see what other marmalades she's got because it's freaking amazing. You need to make this. This is, first of all, the oranges themselves cost $8 and the sugar is three bucks. So you're looking at $11 for all of this marmalade, which if you were to buy this at a farmer's market, it's running usually between eight to $14 a jar. So maybe $90 for this much marmalade, which is crazy. Um, it did take a bit of time, right? So the recipe says it takes only about 30 minutes to cook, but I couldn't get that 220 temperature until about like an hour and five minutes into the cooking. So it does take a while. So be ready for that. You really do want to have a thermometer. Super useful for this. Uh, try to refrigerate a test. I didn't use pectin. I think, I don't think that would have helped much with um, the jam setting. I do feel like, the, so you can see the runniness, it's, it's still pretty thick uh, and I'm happy. So good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this. You leave me a like please, hit that subscribe button, come back, look at more videos. If you don't know how to can, check out my canning video. It's gonna be posted on the, well, on the right, I think depending on where this video is positioned for you. But thank you for sticking around with, uh, with me for the last 10-15 minutes and uh, hope to see you in another video. Bye!